Yo, what it is, YouTube? It's your boy Nixon coming back with another bullseye of a tutorial here today. I wanted to talk about ad libs. How can you make your ad libs stand out and have their own position in the mix? So, for me personally, making ad libs stand out nowadays is absolutely critical. It could literally make or break your song, right? Because nowadays, you know, the it, you know we're looking to always, you know, give the listener something to be excited about, right? And it's not necessarily appropriate on every single song to come out with hella energy. Sometimes you want to come out with a little bit of swag, and you know, have the energetic part be specifically like the candy, the ad libs, you know, the sweetness, right? So let's listen to this uh, vocal that I kind of have right here, and some of the um, ways I was able to, you know, kind of get some of these ad libs tricks, you know, to create a little bit of separation. First you say you was my dog, but you turned into a op. Now you playing with my top, I ain't near nowhere. Then you say you was my friend, try to play me on my bands. I won't give a second chance, I ain't even know it. Know it. You ain't never shown me this before, way back. I'm riding through Pumper, no, I'm trying to get my payback. I'm trying to get my leg back, cause I don't want my ex, so cause I don't do no refunds and I don't do no give back. First you say you was my dog, but you turned into a op. Now you playing with my top, I ain't near nowhere. Then you say you was my friend, try to play me on my bands. I won't give a second chance, I ain't even know it. Know it. You ain't never Show me this before way back I'm riding through Pumper No, I'm trying to get my payback I'm trying to get my leg back Cause I don't want my ex So cause I don't do no reap all right, so let's go into that, you know, and you, you guys, if you do want to see any more different types of content, drop it down below. I'm more than happy to get to it, any different other ideas. So there's multiple ways of creating separation between the lead vocal and all of the background vocals. You can pay attention when you listen to the music right here. You can hear everything you hear the lead vocal. But then when the background vocals come in, you hear that and it doesn't sound like a jumbled mess. Right. And sometimes when uh, clients, you know, send me songs. You know, I can see that uh, there's a couple of, you know, just very small things that they can do to, you know, add some separation, right, to, to help them, uh, you know, just position everything a little bit better in the mix. So let's look at this, right? One thing that I love to use um, is contrast, right? So I have actually a effects um, send right here on my lead vocal, right? Sometimes I might put an effect on the ad libs to make them sound different, but sometimes I might do the reverse thing, right? I always keep my mind open. I'm never scared of doing something crazy. And that's important about, you know, trying to make your ad libs stand out. Sometimes you got to take a risk. You got to check it. You got to take a chance, right? To make it distinguishing, right? And what I did right here is I actually used a, uh, it's a free plugin that comes with uh, Pro Tools, but if you don't have it, you can just use any other stock plugin. It's a, kind of like a uh, just a modulation effect. I love how the modulation actually sounds like with the auto tune moving in between the words, and you know this kind of helped me establish to my listener where everything is at. Right, I'm I'm putting off landmarks, just letting them know, hey, this is my lead vocal, and that's what it kind of sounds like. It's kind of moving around a little bit, and then you know my uh, background vocals and my ad libs are kind of like the pillars that are kind of just holding up the rest of the the rest of the foundation of my song so let's listen to it with and without first you say you was my dog but you turned into a op now you playing with my top i ain't near no it then you say you was my friend try to play me on my bands i won't give a second chance i ain't even know it no it you ain't never shown me this before way back i'm riding through pumper no i'm trying to get my payback i'm trying First you say you was my dog, but you turned into a op. Now you playing with my top, I ain't near no it. Then you say you was my friend, try to play me on my bands. I won't give a second chance, I ain't even know it. No it, you ain't never shown me this before. Way back, I'm riding through. So you can definitely hear how that effect. It kind of without the effect, it just sounded very jumbled. You know, the human ear had really no way to say, okay, you know, uh, are these things. Uh, close friends or are they brother and sister you know it had it had like my your ear literally had no way of telling if these two uh, vocal takes were related or not but when you use an effect maybe sometimes on the ad libs or the lead vocal it will help you know just get, let everything distinguish give it its own pocket so you see the vocal has its own little mono effect that it's giving it itself in its own pocket like it has its own room right in, in the, the song and the next thing that I like to do to make my ad libs uh, kind of stand out right is I like to use uh, you know saturation I have something right here, but uh, this is a plugin that's very unique, right, from Waves, and it's actually called like the Abbey Rhodes uh, King's Microphone. So not only does this give me saturation, but it also models proximity. So that's very important to let, um, you know, the listener know where everything is at, also the proximity. You can do proximity in multiple ways, compression, EQ, many ways, but one, one way I like to use it, it was is legitimately with mic microphone modeling, right? 
So with this Waves plugin, you have a couple of different options. You have a close mic, an ambient mic, and then a natural mic, right? So all of these have like their own different tone and different textures. But the most important thing for me is what I like to do to make my ad lib stand out is I like to send my uh, you know ad libs to that uh, you know um, you know dirt a bus, and from there use a little bit of that mic modeling to say, hey, you know um, this is my ambient mic microphone, right? And it's kind of giving it a little bit of air. So the vocal has its own little you know place in the, in the mix, right? But then I'm using a little bit of saturation to let um, you know the listener know that this is like kind of like the ambience, like you know that that vocal, right? And to enhance the ambience of the ad libs, I also use the plate reverb. So I don't like to share a reverb amongst the lead vocal and the ad libs. That's another way I like to make them stand out. Let's listen. So you can definitely hear like the decay of the ad lib is different. And let's go to a part that has a little bit more ad libs. I done got this cake, but you can't even take it at a center with a click. I probably do it then. Playing with my top, pick them up like a half rule. Wish I had a time machine, I'd probably go bad. Like at a center with a click, I'd probably do it then. Hey, I done made mistakes, and you can't even make it from me. I done got this cake, but you can't even take it from me. You gon' make up all the money, but it still won't make a man. She gon' do all she wanted, she gon' do all she can. First you say you was my dog, but you turned into a op. Now you playing with my top, I ain't even know it. Then you say you was my friend, try to play me on my bands. I won't give a second chance, I ain't even know it. Know it. You ain't never shown me this before. Way back, I'm riding through pumping no. All right, so that's one of my methods that I like to use as well, using a different reverb, maybe like a different uh. A different uh, breed of reverb, you know, sometimes I might use a chamber for the lead vocal, but then I'll purposely pick something like a plate for my background vocals and in addition to my ad libs because I know it just has a different shimmer, it has a different um, texture to it, right? So that's another way to make them stand out because now you hear this dark reverb for the lead vocal, but then you hear this brightness in addition to the ambience, right? That plugin I use with the uh, modeling of the microphone and distance, right? You're hearing this air and the uh, reverb is also, uh, you know, uh, contributing, it's exaggerating it as well, right? And then after that, another thing that I like to do to make my background vocals and my um, ad libs stand out is to actually use some parallel compression, right? And to not share the parallel compression, right? I like to use a completely different parallel compression right here. I was actually using an 1176, right? And uh, sometimes I might even use a DBX 160, right? That's how I usually use, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I usually use a DBX 160 because it has uh, the VCA topology, which is a lot more snappy. But on this song, I decided to use an 1176 uh, blackface for my uh, lead vocal but then on my background vocals I used the UAD right and it, it was I used the bluey right and the bluey was giving it just kind of like a little bit more uh, depth right a little bit more pushing back because I'm using a very very fast attack right but it's only coming in when my uh, ad libs and my background vocals are coming through so that's another way I help them stand out right because it's like uh, you know everything is just popping out you know it has a different parallel compression a different taste and the needles are moving at a different speed as well for example Example, let's look at my lead vocal. Look, let's look at this needle. First you say you was my dog, but you turned into a op. Now you playing with my top, I ain't even know it. Then you say you was my friend, tried to play me on my bands, I won't give a second. So movement and compression is also a great way to make anything stand out in the mix, right? So my lead vocal, I wanted to let the listener know, hey, this is the driveway, right? This is the little SUV, the little slow old um, Honda Civic that ain't really going nowhere. It's only going to go 15 miles an hour up the stop sign. But then I'm letting them know with my background vocals, hey, this is the Ferrari, we, we whipping it, we spin in the block we voo 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 the needle is going all the way from miami to los angeles and back you know it's the, the you know they're living uh two different lives these um compressors one of them is living a slow life you know just uh just a calm safe life and the other one is living life on the edge going everywhere so that's another way to make the ad libs and the background vocals stand out and then lastly what i love to use is side chain multi-band compression so i have a send right here right specifically with my ad libs sometimes i might even incorporate uh you know vice versa i might even have the ad libs contract Contrasting to uh, the background vocals, but what I had right here is the ad libs up against the uh, lead vocal verse, right? So I did a send, right? Then I went over here to studio rack. 
I went over here to Studio Rack and I actually, uh, you know, keyed in my input, right? You know, whoop de whoop, set up my side chain, and then I had a Pro MB, right? So how I set up my Pro MB is I kind of looked on the uh, the frequency analyzer, like where is most of the energy of my lead vocal at? Well, where is the energy for my ad lib at? Which is what I first did, right? And then you know I brought it in here, you know, external side chain, right? And then I kind of created my own side chain that pretty much the lead vocal is ducking every time the ad libs come through. So you. In order for you to do something like this, your ad libs actually have to be good. Like if you, your ad libs are not good, don't don't do this. In this song, let's look at how you know it made an incremental effect. Usually, this would be probably best used between the background vocals where they're coming literally at the same time as the lead vocals. But like I said again, you need to make sure you have actually good background vocals or actually a good ad lib so that the listener finally gets to unwrap the wrapper off of the candy and hear like, whoa, this is like very sweet. This is very tasty. This is the spike of energy. With my top, pick em up like a afro Wish I had a time machine, I'd probably go bad Up, now you playing with my top, I ain't even know it Then you say you was my friend, try to play me on my bands I won't give a second chance, I ain't even know it, know it You ain't never shown me this before Alright, then let me go ahead and turn it off and see uh, If it'll make a difference Make up all the money, but it still won't make a man She gon' do all she want and she gon' do all she can First you say you was my dog, but you turned into a op. Now you playing with my top, I ain't even know it. Then you say you was my friend, try to... So when you hear it like that, it sounds like the ad-libs are kind of blending in with the whole song, which sometimes is good. But in a situation where you actually want the ad-libs to cut through the mix, I like to do that side chain uh, multiband with the fab filter, locate like, okay, where is most of the energy of my ad-lib and duck it. Every time the ad-lib comes through, duck that lead vocal, or I might even do it with the background vocals. So let's listen to how it, it kind of helps it just be a little bit more focused. Make up all the money, but it's still make a man. She gonna do all she want and she gonna do all she can. First you say you was my dog, but you turned into a op. Now you playing with my top, I ain't even know it. Then you say you was my friend, try to play me on my bands. I won't give a second chance, I ain't even know it. Know it, you ain't never show me. So even in a situation like that, right? you're just definitely hearing how like literally you can hear more of the reverb coming from the ad libs because of the the ducking effect that we did from the um, verse but like i said make sure your ad libs sound very good very energetic and they're actually contributing so as the rapper yourself you know the one of the ways you can help make your ad libs stand out is by saying different words using like a uh, different sounds or just some other things that are not already inside of the lead vocal because you've already been you know giving them that steady foundation which is the lead vocal and we already understand that right but sometimes you got to come in there and be a little crazy, a little whoa, woo, ah. So that's in another way that you as artists can help yourself make your ad lib stand out, right? And pay attention. I added a little bit more sustain on my background vocals, right? So my lead vocal was doing what it got to do, but my background vocals, man, piano. You feel me? So that's what you can do as an artist as well to help your ad lib stand out. Maybe you give it a little bit more tail, right? Give it a little bit more tail, but do it in a strategic way because you could be rapping, right? Still giving space for the ad libs, but when background vocals come in, you make it, you know, you have, you give it a little bit of more tail, a little bit of uh, elongation, right? So that's all I, that I got for today. I hope you guys were able to learn, um, you know, something for this. I hope you guys do try out um, the trick, especially like the multi-band side chainer. And I just want to say thanks a lot for being a great part of my YouTube family. I appreciate you guys now. Peace.